This is Jake with Van Dyke Software, and in this video I'll show how to lock down file transfer access in vShell to a specific folder. So I've got this location on my vShell machine I'd like to use for all my user-specific folders. It's C vRoots. It doesn't have to be local, it could also exist on a file server somewhere in my Windows Active Directory domain, but for this example I'm using a folder local to the vShell machine. What I envision is that user Bob would be restricted to a folder specific to his username. User Mary would be restricted to her folder, Perry to his, and so on. The first step is to open vShell's control panel and create a virtual root. Navigate to the common virtual roots category. The next step is to press the add button which brings up the virtual root path window. This virtual root field represents the actual path on the vShell system to which allowed users will be granted access. Rather than creating separate virtual root configurations for each and every account, I'm going to employ the percent user percent substitution. I'll enter C colon backslash vRoots backslash percent user percent, which means that when Perry connects to vShell, he'll be given access to a folder here named Perry. The value specified in the alias field represents the name of the folder that file transfer clients will see and use when they're connected to vShell. I will use the percent user percent here as well so that file transfer clients will see a folder that matches the account name they used for authentication to vShell. To review, the area above represents a mapping between an alias that the file transfer client sees and an actual path that vShell maps it to behind the scenes. This area below is where you control which users have access to this virtual root. I'll press the add user group button so that I can specify the authenticated users group. Since I'm using percent user percent, I don't have to enter each individual user account here. I'm leveraging this built-in Windows group to make my job easier. I press enter and Windows automatically resolves the name and vShell adds it to the access control list. With vShell you can add as many virtual roots as you want, so the home checkbox here is useful if you want users to be placed in this folder immediately after they've successfully authenticated to vShell. This way the file transfer client won't have to CD into their folder to begin transferring files. Press the OK button to add this new virtual root, and there it is listed directly beneath the special unrestricted entry. Since I'm using percent user percent in my virtual root path, I can enable the create user root path when user connects option and vShell will automatically create these user folders if they don't already exist. Let's look at my C drive. Notice how I haven't created any Bob, Mary, or Perry folders yet? That's okay because I'm expecting vShell to make them for me when Bob, Mary, or Perry connect to vShell for the first time. Let's press the apply button to save the vShell configuration and give it a spin. Using the VSFTP file transfer utility within a command shell on the local vShell machine, I'll type VSFTP Perry at localhost to authenticate as Perry. After I authenticate with Perry's password, I run pwd to see where I am. As expected, it shows that I am in slash Perry, because A, I authenticated as user account Perry, and B, the home option on the virtual root configuration was enabled. Looking at the C drive on the vShell machine, I see vShell automatically created the Perry subfolder as a result of Perry's successful authentication. Now let's use VSFTP again, this time connecting as Mary. I type in Mary's password and I see I'm locked into a Mary folder. Looking at the C drive, I see that vShell has created the Mary folder automatically. Also notice that Mary is unable to navigate to anywhere else on the vShell server's file system because she's locked down to the virtual root path composed with the alias name defined in vShell's virtual root configuration. Even if Mary knows the exact path to somewhere on the vShell machine, she can't access it because vShell has locked her to the Mary folder. That's all the time we have for this video, but stay tuned for more videos that are on the way. Until then, stay secure my friends.